The Chaser by John Collier. Alan Austin, as nervous as a kitten, went up certain dark and creaky stairs in the neighborhood of Pell Street and peered about for a long time in the dim light before he found the name he wanted written on one of the doors. He pushed open this door, as he had been told to do, and found himself in a tiny room, which contained no furniture but a plain kitchen table, a rocking chair, and an ordinary chair. On one of the dirty walls were a couple of shelves, containing in all perhaps a dozen bottles and jars. An old man sat in the rocking chair, reading a newspaper. Alan, without a word, handed him the card he had been given. "'Sit down, Mr. Austin,' said the old man very politely. "'I am glad to make your acquaintance.' "'Is it true,' asked Alan, "'that you have a certain mixture that has, er, quite unusual effects?' "'My dear sir,' replied the old man, "'my stock is not very large, but such as it is, it is excellent. "'I think nothing I sell has effects which could be described as usual.' "'Well, the fact is,' began Alan, "'here, for example,' interrupted the old man, "'reaching for a bottle from the shelf, "'here is a liquid as colorless as water, "'almost tasteless, "'quite impossible to discover in coffee, "'milk, wine, or any other beverage. "'It is also quite impossible to discover "'by any known method of autopsy.' "'Do you mean it is a poison?' cried Alan, "'very much horrified. "'Call it a glove cleaner if you like,' said the old man. "'Maybe it will clean gloves. "'I have never tried.' One might call it a life cleaner. Lives need cleaning sometimes. I want nothing of that sort, said Alan. Probably it is just as well, said the old man. Do you know the price of this? For one teaspoonful, which is enough, I guess five thousand dollars. Never less, not a penny less. I hope all your mixtures are not as expensive, said Alan. Oh, dear no, said the old man. It would be no good charging that sort of price for a love potion, for example. Young people who need a love potion very seldom have $5,000. Otherwise, they would not need a love potion. I am glad to hear that, said Alan. I look at it like this, said the old man. Please a customer with one article, and he will come back when he needs another. Even if it is more costly, he will save up for it, if necessary. So, said Alan, you really do sell love potions. If I did not sell love potions, said the old man, reaching for another bottle, I should not have mentioned the other matter to you. It is only when one is in a position to help that one can afford to be so honest. And these potions, said Alan, they're not just, just, er, uh, oh no, said the old man. Their effects are permanent and extend far beyond the first loving look, but they include it now and forever. Dear me, said Alan, how very interesting. But consider the serious side, said the old man. I do indeed, said Alan. For coolness, said the old man, they substitute real love. Give one tiny bit of this to the young lady. Its flavor can't be noticed in orange juice, soup, or cocktails. And however foolish she is, she will change altogether. She will want nothing but to be alone with you. I can hardly believe it, said Alan. She is so fond of parties. Oh, she will not like them any more, said the old man. She will be afraid of the pretty girls you may meet. "'She will actually be jealous?' cried Alan in delight. "'Of me?' "'Yes. She will want to be everything to you. "'She is already, only she doesn't care about it. "'She will, when she takes this. She will really care. "'You will be her only interest in life.' "'Wonderful!' cried Alan. "'She will want to know all you do,' said the old man. "'All that has happened to you during the day, every word of it. "'She'll want to know what you're thinking about, "'why you smile suddenly, why you're looking sad. "'That is love,' cried Alan. Yes, said the old man, how carefully she will look after you. She will never allow you to be tired, to sit in a draught, to neglect your food. If you are an hour late, she will be terrified. She will think you are killed or that some other woman has caught you. I can hardly imagine Diana like that, cried Alan, overcome with joy. Oh, you will not have to use your imagination, said the old man. And by the way, since there are always other women, if by any chance you should later on slip a little, you need not worry. She will forgive you in the end. She will be terribly hurt, of course, but she will forgive you in the end. That will not happen, said Alan. Of course not, said the old man. But if it did, you need not worry. She would never divorce you. Oh, no. And, of course, she herself will never give you the least, the very least reason to worry. And how much, said Alan, is this wonderful mixture? It is not as expensive, said the old man, as the glove cleaner, or life cleaner, as I sometimes call it. No, that is $5,000, never a penny less. 
one has to be older than you are to buy that sort of thing. One has to save up for it. But the love potion, said Alan. Oh, that, said the old man, opening the drawer in the kitchen table and taking out a tiny, rather dirty-looking bottle. That is just a dollar. I can't tell you how grateful I am, said Alan, watching him fill it. I like to help, said the old man. Then customers come back later in life when they are rather more rich and want more expensive things. Here you are. You will find it very effective. Thank you again, said Alan. Goodbye. Au revoir, said the old man.